Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr., and we are on episode 31. Sorry, uh, I, I should probably forewarn you, I'm a little more scattered than usual. It's been a long week, and today was kind of a crunch day, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I deeply, deeply apologize for running a little behind, um... I needed to pack up my guitars to get graded on my guitar repair class, which is nice, a little stressful, uh, especially since uh, everything kind of got paused originally. This was supposed to happen back in March. You remember the before time, before everything closed down. And now everything is sufficiently open that I can at least send it in to get graded and all that. Uh, so that took longer than expected, which meant I left later than expected, which means I stayed at work later than expected, and it all kind of cascaded down. And uh, to keep more in theme with the game we're playing, it's probably a good thing that lightsabers are not a real thing, because I might have resolved some of the uh, more stressful traffic moments a little differently if I had a laser sword. <clears throat> and, <laughs> and that's all I'll say about that. All right. So, we uh, we finally made it to the the surface of Telos. We uh we met up with uh Baradur. I think it is. This guy. Oh. Who needs to level up too cuz uh she's 9, I'm 10. I might level him up just up to 9. I definitely wanted to do that on screen and I want to get him equipped before we go any further. So, we'll we'll start off We'll start off thir episode 31 with that, and then we'll get go further. But first, let's take a look at what kind of what kind of character we were handed with him. <laughs> no pun intended. I, I truly didn't mean that. Um, so he's got strength, but no dex. All right, so he's a little more strength based, not so much on the dex. That would lead me to believe I might want to toss him in melee. Because uh, it is to hit with dex based things is not going to be good. I don't think I have anything that has too big a buff to dex. What's he got for skills? His computer use is awesome. His demolitions are awesome. And his stealth is not awesome. That's okay. His awareness is pretty close to awesome. His Persuade, well, that's not a thing he's got to worry about, so no big deal there. His Repair is really nice. And Security is really nice. And Treat Injury is looking a little sad. But um, one of the things that I like that they did with Knights of the Old Republic 2 is unlike the first one, any character can use a med pack on anyone else. So instead of making sure that everybody's Treat Injury is high enough, that they can heal themselves in combat. Uh, I could say make Kriya, uh, Kriya, Kriya. I could make Kriya's treat injury really high and just have her administer the med packs to everybody else. And that way I don't have to waste his skill points on treat injury, uh, at least not, not in um, Knights of the Old Republic 2. That, that is a very nice use. Uh, I, I'm seeing conflicting things about using uh, different repair skills for crafting, and that's one of the things that I'd like to find out. And I don't think it's going to happen, and we're, we're going to have the opportunity to really dig into that until after we get done with all the stuff on Telos and we get into uh, the broader mission. So uh, I just want to kind of plant that idea right now that some people seem to suggest that I could use Baradur's repair to do all the repair-based crafting instead of having to keep mine as spread out amongst all the different skills. Uh, if I can make that happen, that would be phenomenal. Because then, since he's got demolitions and repair cranked out, I just keep him cranked up on repair and demolitions and let him work on those I've got the security and the computer use. Uh, Korea's got all the stealth stuff, and I can divvy up whatever I need crafted based on that kind of 
that kind of deal. So that's where he's at with his skills. What about his feats? What feats does he have? Okay, so we got somebody that can actually do something with armor. Wonderful. Uh, he's got critical strike for melee. He's got flurry for melee. Okay, so he's got the improved gearhead, which is part of why his repair, security, and computer use looks so good. Uh, he's got conditioning, which is nice. That's a bump to all his saving throws. Uh, he's got power attack. Matter of fact, I don't see a whole lot of, uh, other than a, a blaster pistol and blaster rifle weapons proficiency. I don't see a whole lot of shooting stuff. So between the strength and the the feats that he already comes with, like flurry and critical strike, I'm tempted to just uh, stick a melee weapon in his hands and you know, give him a backup pistol just in case. But uh, beyond that. Let, let him do his thing. And, yeah, he's got the strength. Let's let him use it. Uh, oh, and that's just the melee weapons proficiency. I was wondering if that was going to end up being like the dueling or something like that. Instead of having him dual wield, I may have him go the legit dueling feats uh, to bump up his defense since the low dex is really hurting his def his uh Oh, he's also got unarmed specialist. Nice. Um, shield breaker. Oh yeah, that's right. And this dude can apparently collapse shields like it's nobody's business. And that's one of those things that I'm going to have to remember is a thing as we go. All right. So let's level them up to where do I have her level nine? I think that's where I've got, um, Mr. Discount Han Solo. So let, let's go ahead and level him up to nine at least. Because I think he's another one that you can convert to uh, to be a Jedi later on. All right. You've been granted the following feats this lever. Repulsor strike. Oh, that's probably got to do with his hand and all that. Nice. Okay. So, oh, so all he gets is some skills and skills. All right. He does get a nice, nice spread of skill points. So let's keep demolitions maxed out repair maxed out because those are those are two that i'm short on uh, i do want his security up and his computer use up and i got two more points i'm not gonna waste him on stealth he can't take persuade i'm not gonna waste him on treat injury either so you know what i think i'll do I think at least this go round, I'll use them to get awareness caught up. Because uh, they're, uh, as much as you don't need awareness like maxed out all the time, it is nice. And there are some crafting recipes that require a high enough awareness score. So I want to make sure that I've got somebody with top level awareness. That way, when it, when it comes time to do that kind of crafting, I can do that. So, uh... No, nope, there we go. All right, so we'll hit OK. And accept. All right, so now let's level them up to eight. Now we get a bump in ability scores. Ooh, where do we want to put this? Uh, hmm. Okay, we could put it in strength, which will eventually help with the melee, but not right away. We can put it in Dex, which will eventually help some of his skills and his defense, but not for another few levels until we get that up to 12. Um, we could bump up his con, which will help with the implants that he can use, which is very, very tempting because the implants could solve some of the Dex issues. Or we could bump his intelligence up and get an immediate benefit now in the form of more skill points. Well, a skill point more than what we were getting. Uh, although, given we weren't sure where to put all those skill points before, I, I don't... Hmm. I don't know how much I'm going to take him out into combat, to be honest. He definitely... He's definitely got the skill spread that I might just want to keep him uh, 
bump the intelligence up for that extra skill point and then uh and then worry about the other stuff. Yeah, let's do that. Let's bump that up. Let's get another skill point. And we'll go from there. We'll hit OK. Speaking of skills, this means that we can max out security and repair and demolitions and computer use and awareness. And this means that we now have two points remaining, which will let us level up one of these cross-class skills uh, unless we eventually give him the feat to make it a class skill. Which is tempting. I might just give him stealth to make him my, uh, my major league skill monkey. And uh, just crank all the skills. That's very tempting. Alright, let's bump up the stealth for now. Because uh, I got a funny feeling that he's going to be my crafting guy. So let's do that, and okay. And now we get to give him a feat. I mean, beyond his left and his right. What does that do? Repulsor Strike. Bowder can release energy stored in capacitors in his arm during combat, causing an extra 1 to 6 electricity damage, with a 10% chance of causing slow for two rounds if they fail a fortitude save of d15 plus his level when using an unarmed attack okay so all this comes with unarmed attacks um i don't even know what the unar the base unarmed damage is an additional 2 day damage on all unarmed attacks what's the What's the minimum? I might have to look at that. Because, I mean, <laughs> that's better than any sword I stick in his hands. Alright. What are my options? Alright, so he does qualify for precise shot, but with the deck that low, we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with that. Um regenerate vitality points is always nice. That is well worth a feat to get uh some fast healing. Mobility. Eh. Ah. Finesse, he doesn't have the decks to finesse anything. Uh, dual strike is always an option on the table. Treat injury, class skill, stealth, a class skill. Uh, that that's a uh, that right there is near the top of the list. Just because that'll let me get a little bit more out of the skill points, and let if I can let, figure out how to let him do all the crafting. That that might just make things really easy. Uh, close combat's always nice, um, but only if you're using ranged weapons, since that's going to be his backup. If he's shooting in there close up, then something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Dueling was the other one that I was really looking at because uh, that that will help him with his attack and defense, and with the low decks. We really do want to shore up his defense beyond just armor. And uh, so that helps both keep his offense up and improve his defense. Let's see if there's anything else that would give us a better option for that. Uh, toughness uh, just makes him harder to die. I suggest that's not necessarily that bad. Um, oh, there's no weapons focus for melee weapons or he just doesn't qualify for it. Because I could have sworn I saw something like that. Since we're not going to give him a blaster, we're, we're going to skip these blaster-based ones. Power attack's always good. An improved flurry's good. Um, and cranking up the master gearhead's always nice, too. That, that one we might do after we get some of the other ones taken care of. Uh, and he will never qualify for heavy armor. All right, so medium armor's as good as he's going to get until he gets into a different class, apparently. And I'm not going to give him the two-weapon fighting. I need two-weapon two fighting. Helps the attack at the expense of defense. And his defense is suffering enough. So let's uh, let's get him the dueling. Where? Dueling, dueling. There we go. Let's get him the dueling feat for now. And then we'll get that stealth probably on the next go-round. Because I definitely want to shore up his... Uh, his defense. 
defense. Oof. No. Okay. And let's get him one more level up. And we just get some skills. Uh, maybe I should have got... You know, maybe I should have just gone with the uh, stealth as a class skill. Because that would have made this a little more useful. Live and learn. Alright. There we go. Oh. That's the size that's going to let me take him anyway. Alright. Oh. And we were going to then equip him with something. Because what gets a guy without equipment? Um, first things first. We have... No belts. That is a shame. We can get him a melee shield. And we can get him an energy shield. Always useful. Ooh, armor. What armor do we get him? We got the Verpine Fiber Mesh, which has a defense bonus of 8. And it kind of caps the max dex at plus 3, but since he has no dex, that's not that's a non-issue. Uh, 5, 3. Or just regular clothing. I'd really love to get him in the heavy armor because he has no dex bonus. So capping out at a max, max dex of plus one is no big deal. But um, that's not an option. So I guess we'll get him this verpine fiber mesh. And because uh, that's, that's the highest defense armor I've got at the moment. All right. So that at least get that gives his defense up to 19. That's a little better. Uh, oh, you can't do the advanced combat because he needs a con of 16. Okay, I, I know, I know, I'm showing stuff. But we can get him a biotech implant, which gets him regen 1. Always useful. Um, I mean, he can technically use a stealth field generator, but that, that seems like a waste with somebody with a stealth of 2. Uh, so we'll, we'll skip that for the moment. To remind me that I need to do something later. Alright, so we got the insulated gloves, fire and cold damage immunity, accuracy glove, which would get him the weapons focus for blaster pistol and rifle, solve some of the feet issues, although the dex is so low. That's not... Uh, okay, here we go. Let, let's give him the detonator gloves. Uh, plus two to four is always good to have. But mostly it's for that plus three in demolitions. I mean, the damage immunity versus fire and slashing is nice too. Don't don't hear what I'm not saying. But mostly I'm looking at the, the biggest benefit for him is going to be that uh, plus three to demolitions. And since he is about to be my demolition specialist. Uh, oh, that's right. I already checked. We have no belts. But we've got some weapon options. Now... Since he's doing dueling, uh, I can give him a sword that I have not yet upgraded. <laughs> I don't think I have anyway. Might have to find some more upgrades. Yeah, because we got we got a lot of blasters and pistols for a bunch of melee folk. I mean, I can always give him the plasma torch. Does a whole one damage with another bonus of one to six fire. Uh, useful for knocking down doors, but that's about it. Uh, we can give him the exchange negotiator, which is pretty much the same as the torch, except it does physical bonus damage instead of fire damage. He also has a chance to stun people. But uh, I, I like the 2 to 12. It's got a higher floor and a higher ceiling, and uh, floor being the minimum damage you could possibly do, the ceiling being the highest damage you could possibly do. So we'll, we'll do the sword for now. And let's get a blaster ready for him anyway. Just the same. In case we need to do some range stuff later on. Uh, Lux's Disruptor's got a really nice crit range of 18 to 20. And unstoppable damage. 1 to 6. That is always useful. Energy damage. 3 to 6. Some bonuses for uh, crits, for massive criticals. 
That's right, because I upgraded that field survival pistol. 1 to 4, 1 to 8. 1 to 8 with some ion bonus. I'm tempted to... Although, I don't think I've run across T3 yet, and I wonder if I have some of his weapons in my inventory. Yeah, let's give him let's give him the the unstoppable disruptor for now and uh once we get T3 we can see if we need to change that out. So that gets him equipped. That gets him leveled up. That means we should probably go ahead and do a save real quick. Are you sure? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Now. Where were we? We were surveying the wreck. Wait, what's that? That's it? No. Uh, this is not looking so hot. It does not look like I can get past there. Those guys do not look like a fun time. Those look like mines. Hey, if only I had a demolitions guy. All right. Show me what you got. Recover that. The mercenaries have at least two hidden caches like this. We should keep our eyes open. Y you you interrupted me for that. I thought I had coffee time while you recovered some mines. All right. There we go. Recover the mine. Oh, yeah. Recover the mine. Oh, I should probably also send him off uh, solo so these people don't follow in. Yeah, I, I do wish to turn solo mode on. That, uh, not having that on seemed like a, suddenly a bad idea. That's how your party accidentally walks into a minefield. And doesn't walk back out again. Before I loot the box, let's recover the mines. Alright, that's everything but the hidden cache. So let's turn solo mode off. Let's get the person in charge back in charge. And let's loot that hidden cache. Ooh! I like money. Alright, let's get the items, and what else do we need to do? Um, let's explore this little cavern before we head down the valley, because that looks like the only way out. But let's make sure we're not missing anything up this way, and I like filling in the maps. It gives me a sense of completion to know that everything's in. Um... All right, I'm guessing that's automatically hostile or something. So let's do that. And load up on some critical strikes. See how everybody else manages. Well, they're definitely coming this way. Let me handle this. I will silence you. Well, handle it. Eh, that wasn't that bad. Alright. It is a night. Alright, let's uh Let queue up more. This. Mostly I just want the XP. I mean <laughs> Come on guys. He's just hanging there. Can I can I loot him for anything? Come on. Surely he's got like some leather or something, right? No? No. All right. Um. Oh, bother. I don't see anything else. Uh. Other than empty map, right? That's it. Yep. That's it. 
then uh I guess it's a little bit further to the south we go. Mercenaries, right where we need to go. That sentry droid probably spotted us already. They were probably looking for me when they saw your shuttle go down. Well, that is awfully helpful. Alright, so here's where I do the really fun thing. Um, in case you don't know... Oh, okay, good. I didn't hit that as hard as I thought I did. Alright, so in case you don't know, the live stream is live recording the next six episodes before they go up. Which means if you're watching this later on YouTube, this episode's done until tomorrow's. Well, that was fun. Unless I just died. Then it was a little less than fun. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're having fun. And if you want to watch live, you can follow along on Twitch. I live stream the recording of the next six episodes at least once a week. I might even throw in some bonus content here and there if time allows. And you'll find the link in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you'll get notified when new episodes go up, live stream archives from some of my other stuff, and various and sundry other videos, because I do more than just this. And if you want to get notifications, don't forget to hit the bell. And if you really, truly enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and all that good fun stuff. If you have any questions, queries, quips, scopes, comments, complaints, or other whatnot, don't forget to leave those in the comments down below. Lastly, if you're enjoying the show, if you're getting some value out of it, then consider giving a little value back. Go to live.anonjunior.com. It'll take you to the Streamlabs page where you can tip or donate, however you want to think about it. And there's no preset amount because this is a straight up value for value proposition. So if you're getting value out of the show and you would like to give a little value back, even if it's just enough for a cheap cup of coffee, then uh, consider going, giving a little bit, especially if it tickled the nostalgia or opened your eyes to a new game that you might play. And uh, with all that said and done, we're, uh, we're going to cut out, have fun, enjoy, and I'll see you next time.